Hello and welcome to IT Security Labs and today we are going to be learning about malware. In particular, we are going to be learning about how my lab environment here is now infested with all these alerts. How did these alerts end up on my system? What kind of malware is this and how can we actually detect against it? In this case, as you can probably see here, this is a Microsoft Word document that was loaded with a reflective PowerShell. So we're going to show you how to generate this payload so that we can deliver to our victim. And then we'll show you how these alerts got about. Once we get to that point, we'll also go ahead and look at the investigation process. How can one approach this investigation to find out what kind of document was generating all these alerts? How did we get here and how can we reverse it? So we're going to learn a few things here. But to get started, here's our lab. This is my Kali Paper lab. I have my attacker machine here, which you're going to be seeing very soon. Then I have Kali Paper, which is running our Elastic Sim. This is the one that it was showing us the alerts. So here's our Windows victim. And this is where we'll be delivering our payload. So, right, so to get started, we have a victim machine here. Let's name this one PC1 or victim. And we also have our attacker. This is my Windows attacker machine. In this case, I'm using the uh, Mandate Offensive VM. So we need to create a Microsoft Word document. So I'll just search for Word here. Let's find a Word document that we're going to weaponize. In this Word document, we are going to put some code, in this case, VB script, that will be used to download our payloads. So let's exit out of there. Last time we delivered our payload directly on the victim and it was blocked. This time we're going to hide our payload or our attack traffic, in this case, inside of this Word document. So in order for us to do that, we do it the old fashioned way. By the way, this gets detected all the time anyway. Uh, we go to view, macros, view macros. We need to create a new macro. In this case, I already have one created to save us time, but you, you, you can click on create. I'm going to click edit. And here I just have a simple macro. This is how macros are defined their variables. And in this definition here, we're saying, hey, um, we want to name it my macro and we're going to set dim as a string. In this case, the string that we're, uh, I mean, we're going to set this string here as a string. And the string that we have is to tell PowerShell to use the new object feature, in this case with our web client, to download from our attack machine. So we are actually just running a download. And instead of actually downloading it, we're actually saving everything in memory. So we say, hey, go to my attacker machine, and get a file, file called malware.ps1. Instead of saving that file, let's automatically run PowerShell IEX against it and make sure that you hide this from the user and let's run the string. That's all we're doing here. This, if you save this document, name it bed doc. It's named bed doc to doc on the desktop and save. So now that we have a bad document here, we just need to go to our attacker machine, create our own payload, and then uh, have it call to that. Okay, so to generate our payload, we go to our attacker machine. This is my Kali attacker. I'm in my payloads folder. And we're using MS of Venom. We're saying, hey, MS of Venom, can you generate a Windows payload? In this case, I want an HTTPS payload so that it's a little bit more realistic. Uh, when people see web traffic, HTTP traffic, they don't usually uh, worry too much. In my local host, this is going to be at the IP address of Kali. The local port is the HTTPS port. So right here it says for exit function, we want a thread. So what this means is if someone closes the web document that generated our payload, we should be able to still have our reverse shell. We want to output a file. In this case, it's a PS1 file. I'm naming it payload.ps1. So when we hit enter, this will generate our payload. Okay, so now that our payload is done, we can cat payload.ps1. And this is the payload that we have. What you want is this buff payload right here. Instead of uh, saving and generating this and delivering this file to the victim, this file might actually get detected because they can tell what, what's in here. So we want to run this in memory. In order for us to do that, we copy this. So right here, I have uh, my loader here. And what it's going to do is it's going to allocate the memory for me on the system. Then it will also copy this buffer that I just defined here. This buff here, this is my shell code uh, that I need to run. 
which is identical to what I just generated in PowerShell. Then this will copy that buffer into my allocated memory, uh, making sure that it fits by checking the length. Then it will execute this inside of the memory itself. So this will not be saved on disk, copy it, and then come to our attacker machine here. And I already copied mine. It's called malware.ps1. So if I do that, it's the same exact thing, including my uh, payload right here. So this will be executed in memory. So you just need to deliver it to the victim. So let's what's our Python 3? Minus M HTTP dot server on 80 to host that loader that we have. Then coming back to our victim, the moment we hit it, we double click on the document. Remember, we said that that was going to reach out to us and download the payload. So if we go back to here, uh, view macros view macros this is the macro that we downloaded for us so just as a reminder it's going to run this string that we just defined here to download powershell from our victim and it's called malware.ps1 but instead of saving it it's going to execute it in memory so after our listener is done we're staging it we just need to set up here our meta exploit we need to listen so msf console in quiet mode let's uh, execute we're going to set our payload to the same as the one that gener that we generated. I mean, our listener in this case. Then uh, set our local host to us. Local port. Actually, I need to change that. My local port, I said it was 443. Then uh, let's run it. Okay, so I just realized that uh, when I ran it, I had uh, Metaprater reverse TCP. That's not the one that we generated. We had the uh, metapreter uh, HTTPS, reverse HTTPS, not HTTP. So set payload, Windows, metapreter, reverse HTTPS. Now let's look at our options. In this case, as you can see, that's our payload. That's our port, um, 10 here. Now let's run. So this should start a listener for us. And our payload is already ready to go and if any victim clicks on our web document this listener should gener generate uh, a reverse shell so let's click on our machine here's our bed doc you double click immediately i want to come back here and see if it reaches out to download because that's the first part and as you can see there is my malware.ps1 let's check the second tab and here's our metapreter session so we got a session if i type uh shell where am I? In this case, this is the name of the desktop, and I'm I'm in as user background. If come back here on the same machine to check if we are who we are. Where am I? In this case, that's the same name, vagrant. The other thing that we can do is here, maybe let's create a back user, a backdoor user, net user, uh hacker, and password of pass one, two, three, four such add we might not be able to add here since we're just running as a regular user as you can see access denied but this user is in the administrators group so net user vagrant let's see if they are indeed in the administrator group yep they are in the administrator group so run as i don't know if this works i'm just making stuff up right now Let's try again, net user slash add dash F for force. I don't know. Okay, so those are the options. So dash F is not a thing. I don't think this works uh, because we don't have the uh, proper permissions, but that's okay. We're also getting logged. Every time we say de access denied, it should be uh, logging. So we just got a reverse shell on a Windows machine. It didn't, they didn't stop us here. The Elastic Agent is running on this machine. So did our intrusion detection system see anything? Let's change my time here. Instead of last 24 minutes, maybe let me do last 15. Supply that. Update. Okay. 
So it will be indexing in the background, but right now, potential injection via PowerShell. We already have one uh, major alert that fired here. So let's see. How did it know that there was a potential injection via PowerShell? Uh, there was an alert that was probably looking for some interesting stuff. Here's the rule that fired. Most of the time, these rules don't tell us uh, much here. We need to actually go to um, GitHub and find out. But this rule was ran once, and we got a potential injection via PowerShell. It didn't even give us the multi attack framework uh, IDs here. So it was a process injection, uh, dynamic li library, and portable execution injection. Okay. PowerShell file script block. That's what it, it, it was doing. Let's go back to more alerts. In a little bit here, you notice that uh, there was a user creation alert. This has something to do with me trying to create a user immediately after I got a reverse show. Of course, as you can see, it's better. It's a bad idea because if you run any funny user creation or modifications, they're usually logged. And in this case, it's, it's seeing it. Uh, we also have potential anti-mouse scan interface bypass via PowerShell. That's what I was trying to do. I was trying to bypass um, MSI. I was trying to just run everything in memory. I didn't want any problems. So what does that uh, potential anti-malware scan look like? And this is how we learn detection. This is how we uh, actually get our hands dirty. So it says uh, the process on desktop was created uh, for that. This is um, something that we did. So let's go and see if we can identify some of these rules. If you go to elastic detection rules here, you will notice that you can search for, for these rules. In this case, I searched for the exact rule that we were looking for, uh, defensive version, MSI bypass via PowerShell. And this is the rule that we have. So this brings us down to, okay, people can detect stuff. How are they detecting it? If they are writing rules, how did they write the rule? So here we are for the first time looking at a rule. In this case, this rule is a different transformation, like transform if it's OS query to run this OS query here. So I wasn't too, too interested by that. I was interested in everything after the rule here. Uh, this was written by Elastic. Thanks to them, we can learn this stuff for free. Um, this is looking for Windows logs. And it tells us here, like possible investigation steps. So examine the script content that triggered the detection. Look at the suspicious DLL. Imports, collection, or exfiltration capabilities, suspicious functions, encoded compass, anything. They're just saying, look at this stuff. If we get to investigate the script execution chain, uh, the parent process tree. Okay, that we can do. Here, it says, um, this is the rule. Let's see if we, it will show us. But as far as process execution tree is concerned, we can look at this one. Suspicious child process uh, from Microsoft. Oh, that is interesting. So here's Microsoft Word. This is obviously, as you can tell, tied to what we did there. Um, here we can see some kind of interesting stuff. Uh, for, for starters, here's the partial part that got caught. This is the download script uh, string that was on the actual macro, not in my payload. But still, we should be able to see like a process ancestry. Okay, so this just shows me a history of saying, okay, a suspicious Microsoft child process was generated. Then from that child process, we ended up running this user create stuff. That's really bad. We shouldn't be doing that. <laughs> Where Microsoft Word ends up with the child process that ends up creating user accounts. That really is not uh, okay. All right, so let's go back to our rule again. Because it does uh, start looking at interesting things here. This is the query that I, I was in, more interested in, right next to me here. So this is a process on Windows machine, and they're looking for PowerShell script text. If we have a process that's on Windows, and also any of these. In this case, uh, they're looking for system management, automation, utils, or MSI stuff here. Then if you look, they're also looking for or PowerShell script file text that says system runtime internal op service marshal copy, for example. Let's go look at our source code of uh, how we, we're trying to hide our malware. If we scroll down here, you notice that I had a thread that was generated and I called system runtime internal op marshal. 
Uh, I also did a copy on this line here. So that matches part of that uh, rule that we are looking at. And for people like myself who are trying to be better, I'm now already asking if this is what they're looking for, and I suspect this is what got me caught, is there something that does something similar and still gets me the same result and bypasses this rule? So this is a very good learning opportunity for us. But I think that's the part that got us caught with the copy and all that stuff. This is very fascinating from just one Word document that was pegged with our malware. We generated all these rules, including our careless user account creation here. So there's definitely more things here about creating some rules, understanding how uh, injecting in memory works, especially uh, we need to use like Process Explorer or Process Hacker to see these processes actually. But in this case, I wasn't trying to generate anything. I was running in memory and I wanted to see if there are any rules that will catch us. And as you can see, no matter where you run, the defenders are always going to be working hard to catch you. In this case, I got caught. If you like this, please let me know. Otherwise, thank you very much for being here. And please remember to like and subscribe. I'm going to try to isolate this host and respond accordingly. But I hope to see you next time.